fixing the format to actually play it and blue white approach are my favorite decks to play i don't think blue white approach is particularly well positioned i think this deck's actually a little bit better positioned than blue white approach and Corey burkhart i apologize if i pronounced that wrong um from channelfireball.com wrote a little article slash sideboarding tips and things for this deck and since people had already been suggesting it or requesting it rather not suggesting it and I absolutely love playing it. Felt like a perfect day to jump right on in. Um, we are actually back into friendly leagues today, though, because I don't know if I will have enough time to finish the entire league, and then I would want to finish it later in a video, and I don't want to lock out my other stuff. As I've said before, uh, versus a blind opponent, I don't care what's in my hand. I'm just never, never getting rid of this on uh, turn two search for Ascanta. So when I see this, I automatically think they're like some kind of black white token deck. They may or may not be, but if they are, that's pretty bad news. So, uh, whereas blue white approach feels almost unlosable versus these decks pre board. Drake Haven's got the same issues, the same weaknesses, and doesn't have as good as game one. But overall, we're fine. An opponent missed a land drop, so that makes us obviously a lot finer. We'd just be cycling the Hieroglyphic Illumination anyway, so we'll just go ahead and throw her in the graveyard. And it's kind of important to uh, put the first couple cards in your graveyard, especially if you have a cycler, because you want to flip this in this deck as quickly as possible, even more quickly than you would in the uh, approach decks. We're just actively putting cards in our graveyard right now. And honestly, at this point, I kind of expect to win game one. We've not won yet, but I think it would be hard for them, uh, hard pressed for them to make a comeback here. I'm actually going to cycle the first one of these. Let's see. Always yield. Pay to one. Yes. And then. Whatever. I just want to click always yes. Always yield. And pretty much whatever it is is going to the graveyard. And we're now going to set behind these counter spells and things. We'll probably be bringing another Drake out this turn to block with. Because we still have mana to counter spell if need be. If they tap some amount of mana here, we're going to go ahead and cycle this too and try to block. We're only really worried about Anointed Procession, so wouldn't care if he actually resolved a hidden stockpile on this board state. As long as we can protect from the other ones. And out into the graveyard, yes, flip. And now we're just feeling hunky dory. Have our engine set up now. We actually closed the game fairly quickly from this board state. Um, 
don't actually care about that card. It's just whatever. Save the Sackler for another turn. And now we have three hard counter spells. Pretty hard for them to beat game one. I don't saw a tokens deck in a long while, by the way. This is kind of a treat. I really enjoy the tokens decks. I did play a fifth land that time. Could have cast out that, but they have their own cast outs, so don't really want to get in that type of board thingy. Another Drake Haven. Really helps push the pressure. Just take our one point of damage for sure. Oh well, they don't have anything else there. Don't care about a start to finish at all. We have multiple hard counter spells now. And we have a potential two turn clock. Don't care about anything like that. They really need a Wrath of God to win here. And we're obviously not going to let a Wrath of God resolve. How are the frames looking? The frames are looking pretty good. Yeah. So in terms of sideboarding, we're probably at least going to bring in this stuff. Kind of want to bring in alternate kill conditions, but... I don't think... Uh, oh, excuse me for yawning. I don't think we're susceptible to... I don't think we're susceptible to actually dying to Lost Legacy as much as the other builds. Um, I think I actually want to keep the Curator of Mysteries in here. I think they're pretty decent in this match. And they cycle worst case. I'm looking at these renewed fates and thinking that like maybe that's what I want to get rid of. I think I might want to dump a few of these. Maybe in all four of them, even. Don't know what I would take out for the last card. Like, looking at a sarcophagus, but I think this card can actually overperform in this match. Also a sensor, but I don't think I really want to get rid of a sensor, so let's try this. Could potentially get rid of one of the Wrath effects. 
Probably don't need all of them, probably just need one. It's a keep. Could be better, but it's definitely a keep. Probably hold this to try to make sure he can't play procession on four. He's got blue cards. I wonder if he played a blue mana or game one and I just didn't notice. That's very possible. I'm not very attentive. Kind of want to cycle the illumination, but I also kind of don't. Rip. Huh. It's pretty colorful. I have a second cast out, I guess that's good. Kind of already out of gas, though. Really hoping to get some value out of the sensor. No value of the sensor to be had here. Could have cycled it for a negate since we're probably going to cycle it anyway. Or not a negate, but uh, uh, Jace's defeat. Sorry. Eh, see if we would have hit. We wouldn't have hit, so I guess it doesn't matter. But that's also that's the line of play we could have taken. We have an okay setup here, but way too many lands. We're like setting on eight already. Yeah, we still have plenty of kill conditions beyond Lost Legacy. Mostly curators of mystery. And two torrential gear hooks. I don't think I ever want to side these in, but maybe I do. A good argument that I could want this card as well. Kind of like the idea of this card on Evolving Wilds to quote unquote get somebody, or even on a potential Eternalize. We didn't even sideboard into Jace's defeat, so I don't know why I was saying that a second ago. I, f I forgot that we didn't realize he had the blue in his deck. Uh, opponent's taking a sweet time here. A sweet, sweet time. I don't really want to put the champion of wits in the graveyard. Hey, Flame Guts, what's up, man? Just in time to watch our opponent lost legacy us. Sure. Uh, well, we'll start with this. Guess we'll play this. 
I don't think we lost, but we're certainly in bad shape. He's only got one card in his hand. We could hit, like, our Torrential Gear Hulk or something and maybe have a good shot. We also have these two flyers here. It's kind of interesting that he would negate the Fumigate, because I consider the Champion of Wits better than the three damage he has in play. I was going to... I guess he... I'm probably going to hard cast that. A blocker. Certainly in bad shape, though. And if he kills both of these, we can actually get them back as well. Which is a nice thing. It's like tapping a bunch of mana here. Okay. So he counterspelled our Fumigate, then cast his Fumigate. I don't know why, but I find that real awkward. Um, I think we'll main phase cycle this. I mean, we do have uh, a million lands, so. Found like 11 lands already. 13 if you count the two in our graveyard. Like to draw our abandoned sarcophagus at this moment, or we could just draw another land. Gonna have to hit a spell. Surprised he didn't buy that back last turn. Well, he's got a two turn clock. Another land's not going to do it. So if he has a counter spell, I guess we're just dead. We're probably just dead anyway because of that now. It's going to be real hard to beat that. Hey, eight spells and 27 cards. Well, I guess that's not true. Eight spells and 23 cards. Don't think he should add anything else to the board here. Okay, that one's fine to add to the board. Torrential Gear Hulk. Well, we didn't get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty unfortunate. It's only 24, by the way. We're not even playing to build a 25. Maybe I want this card back. Gotta keep these on the play. What would I take out for one of these? Pretty sure I just want everything. Maybe I can cut, like, one Fumigate. He left... Um... It's pretty bad, but we'll keep it.
pretty bad, but we'll keep it. Beating these decks post boards just so very hard because at any time they draw a Lost Legacy, the game's just over. Not like a hundred percent over, but you have to get super lucky. Don't like actually cycling that here, but as you can see, we're so light on action. I don't think we have much of a choice. I don't think we can mulligan this hand either. It's not really gotten any better. We drew like a second settle when we barely ever even want to first. I guess I'm going to cycle this. It's what he's most likely to take anyway. And I don't care if we force him into uh, making us discard one of those. But yeah, it seems like opponent drew rather well. We've not, we didn't see a Drake Haven in like X number of cards last game. We've not saw one in our top 12 this game. We did just draw our best card, though. So as long as he doesn't have Lost Legacy here, we have reasonable chance. If he does have Lost Legacy, we have an okay chance. Not a Lost Legacy. Yes, Dunes to the Graveyard. So we get to force flip search for Ascant the next turn if we choose. We can even settle these two if we want. I actually think I will. They both have him bomb. He's not likely to play anything I care more about. This might get a counterspell out of his hand. I don't really care if he gets more lands. He hasn't been doing anything with the lands he does have. And I don't really want to bluff a counterspell. And it lets us, like, say we draw a Drake Haven, we get to keep it now, which is nice. Yeah, we're going to put that in our graveyard anyway. I'm actually going to go ahead and flip this in case for some reason I don't use the search for Ascante here. There's a good chance I use it because the cast out is very powerful versus the hidden stockpile, but there's it's a non-zero chance. You don't care to take the one point of damage. I want to cast out that, but I want to make sure we can try to do this first. Um, uh, sorry, I wanted to counter Veiling wins this, but, uh, casting out this was a higher priority, so I wanted to go ahead and use the cast out first and see if it resolved. There's a Drake Haven. I think we're just going to go ahead and slip this in while we can. Don't mind to take one little hit here. Kind of hoping we don't see an anointed procession, but... Alright. That's not something that's very common in these decks, but... It's much better than Lost Legacy. Really, you have to have both in this spot. Seems pretty fortunate. I guess I'll take this one. Don't really want either of them here. And we hit a land. He's 
got double champion of wits in his graveyard? Uh <laughs> How do you randomly get those in his graveyard in this spot? Alright, so he's basically gonna get to do whatever he wants this game. Actually just gonna draw two cards. And then I'm going to attempt to block. Why did it give that like that weird priority there? It's going to counterspell that one. It feels pretty great to me. Because now he doesn't get to uh, eternalize one of those big things. And like he basically gets to win the game if he gets to eternalize one of those things. Feel like we're running absurdly badly here. Guess we should have not cast a torrential gear hole last turn. We would have been able to counter spell, but like he wouldn't have played the spell. Like 30 cards deep in our deck and we saw one Drake Haven. He saw multiple hidden stockpiles and the three best cards he has in the match versus us. And three sideboard cards. Just feels like we're running re Why would you ever play that land? You might want to discard that land. That seems so suboptimal. You might have even got a land like this that you could have played if you felt like it. If you were going to play that land, you might as well have scribed. What did we draw? No, oh, we drew nothing again. Another cast out. Cast outs don't really do anything for us at the moment. Those are the problem. They just don't do anything for us at the moment. Only Drake Havens do. We're now 36 cards deep in our deck and we found one. So they're not buying back another champion to whiz, which means they have another counter spell. Guess it's better to use this one then. Feel like he should be attacking. He knows we're a fumigate deck. Fortunately, we need to fumigate too much. I feel like opponent keeps giving us chances when we shouldn't have any chances at all. Alright, well, that's a bad sign. So you start Drake Havens now.
What do we get? Another land. Beautiful. Uh, two of our kill conditions to the bottom. Uh, I don't know whether I want to play this. Probably. Because we're probably going to need to do a lot of abandoned sarcophagus type things to win this. I'm in pretty bad shape right now though. We have to use search for Ascanta a lot. This over here for a bit. Alright, what do we got? Eh, we'll just pass. Maybe attempt to get a settled wreckage in. Well, have to look for a counterspell for that one. That one's pretty strong. Didn't get there. Still didn't get there. There is a negate in our deck, so I guess we'll go ahead and cycle this as well. Eh, didn't get there at any point. Uh, no, we're playing Drakehaven, but we're, we've lost, like, th these matches are just unwinnable. It's one of the many negative things about this deck. I guess I'm going to go ahead and play this. Lost Legacy is just way too hard to beat. What in the hell? I did not click that. Well, I don't, I didn't mean to click that. It's just almost impossible to beat Lost Legacy. They still have one more champion of Wits in their graveyard? Not a lot we can do about it. Casually draw eight cards if they feel like it. Guess we can't even look for... We don't have any disallows or anything, so there's nothing to look for. How you doing tonight, Ricky? It's going to duress us? I mean, sure. That's the card I consider the least valuable in my hand. This is the card I consider second least valuable. One of these will probably be fun. Um. Yes. No. Draw. Well, 
We're gonna get back to our abandoned sarcophagus pretty fun. <laughs> Ew, why would you want to play such a bad, unfun, un deck with no decision making? I guess casting Blood Moons quickly is fun ish. <laughs> fun ish. Is he really going for the Shelter Dune? Does he have double counter spell here? I guess he's got double counter spell. Deck is miserable right now. It is not close to good. It has no redeeming qualities right now. It's like the worst it's ever been. What's this one? Alright, okay. I guess I could have counterspelled that if I felt like it, but I don't feel like he's ever going to do anything with it that matters. Not crazy. I am accurate. So three more blinks to the bottom. Cycle this card that's blacked out for some reason. Sure. Should right about now be getting ready to start drawing our threats again. Blood Moon's always good. I don't even know if it's the best Blood Moon deck. I think Pons is the best Blood Moon deck. Well, the highest percentage of Blood Moon on two. I guess that doesn't necessarily make it the best Blood Moon deck. Pretty sure I'm just going to Gear Hulk here. Probably buy back another Settled Wreckage. At this point, I'm worried about milling myself. Like, fumigate my one torrential gear hook? I guess. Not gonna waste a counter spell on that. Pretty sure I'm gonna die to getting milled this game, by the way. So we have to counter spell that, even though we don't want to. Um, well, he gets less of them, I guess. Can't put anything in the graveyard. Do I want to put this in the graveyard? No. Do I want to flip this? No. Do I want to just like draw a random card? Sure. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're two cards away from drawing a any of our actual threats. What do we got in our graveyard? So we have two fumigates, two settles. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yes, we'll look at the top card. That's a land. That sucks. We know what these two are. So it will give us one blocker here.
It, it wasn't much of a threat, though. Like, he's got a second anointed procession in his graveyard. And he's going to draw a million cards. It's just, we're not going to, uh... I don't think we're going to win trying to do something like that. I'm pretty sure that these two 4-4s four are our only ways to win. I don't think they're good enough. Because I knew the exact cards I wanted. I knew how many down they were. Oh, oh, I, was, I, I wasn't originally going to cycle it. I changed my mind. Wait, what What did he just use this on? Oh, he killed my abandoned sarcophagus. Well, that's a problem. Do I want to put this in my graveyard? I guess so. Do we kind of need to draw another abandoned sarcophagus? Don't think we can actually win here before the game's over. We're gonna try. We've got seven turns so we can attack for 35 damage. And he's gonna gain more than that. Very likely gonna gain more than that over the next couple of turns. Yeah. Alright, well we just lost. We actually have no out now. Actually have no out now, right? Am I missing something here? Yeah, we have no out now. We had to draw extra cards. We couldn't beat what was on the board. Just had to hope he didn't have another creature. Like, we, we couldn't beat what's on the board. We can't even attack. We literally couldn't just... We couldn't beat these four cards. Or these these two cards and the one abandoned sarcophagus in his graveyard. Wasn't something we could beat from there. Because it's considerably better than Blue White Approach. It's harder to disrupt than Blue White Approach. Like, if the, if I was playing Blue White Approach, the game would have been over the second he cast that Lost Legacy. And he'll 100% get to resolve a Lost Legacy. When you're playing this version of the deck, you have a chance to cast a Drake Haven beforehand. And I could actually beat that with a little bit better draws. It's, just, it's the same thing. It, if you don't understand why this deck isn't good, you shouldn't understand why Approach of the Second Sons is good. Or you shouldn't think Approach of the Second Sons is good. Because this deck is literally an Approach of the Second Sons deck with a more resilient, harder to disrupt kill condition. They're, they're the same deck. We'll play first. This deck has a little bit better mono red match, for example. This deck doesn't fold as easily to team or post sideboard. It's just a more resilient blue white control deck. We well, just happen to get paired versus a bad match. It happens. But that match is also an auto loss for approach, so like like that's not a negative for this deck. Like this deck also or that deck or blue white approach also doesn't beat the deck we just played versus. I didn't say I lost. I said the game got hard. But that was, we got Lost Legacy deep into a game and we we were very behind on the board when we did get Lost Legacy. It wasn't like he just cast turn free Lost Legacy and we couldn't counterspell it and the game was over. Like, we were already behind when he cast a Lost Legacy. 
Alright, well I guess we have to cycle this too. It, does, it doesn't say you win the game. It says you wait at least seven turns and cast it, and then you win the game if you draw it again and cast it. It automatically says you have to play a minimum of eight turns and hit all your land drops during those turns. That's a, that's a pretty big ask for a deck, which is why the deck doesn't beat Mono Red. So, land please? That's not a land. I'd rather cycle this one if I'm cycling one. Well, I'd rather hit my land than not. Alright, hit a land. Happy days. Again, if you have more than one, that's still a minimum of eight turns. And you had to hit all seven land drops. Uh, I guess we'll go for it. He's got revolutionary rebuffs in his deck. Wasn't something we expected. And then he let it resolve? Wow. Anyway, for example, this game, um, assuming our opponent's playing blue-black control, and we don't know that he is, and it looks like he actually wasn't, but if he was playing, playing blue-black control, we just won on the spot. Uh, well, don't think I have to get rid of that this turn. I can just try to develop things. I don't think I'm going to create anything this turn. Just really wanting to hit a land. Not a land. Because I don't hit lands. We'll make one now. Uh, disappointing, but... Happens. Well, you can win before turn 9 if you have a turn free Drake Haven, but more importantly, the big difference is you don't have to hit every land drop with this deck. Like, I just missed a land drop, and I still feel like I'm going to easily win this game. Like, I'll be pretty surprised if I do not win this game. But that's the big difference. And this deck's a little bit better versus Mono Red. Keep in mind that Blue White Approach cannot beat Mono Red. Consistently. You can beat anything sometimes, but it cannot beat it consistently. Sure. Cycle... to one yes cycle pay to one yes don't care if he resolves anything here nothing he has interacts with these two cards so that's all that matters I mean, I like playing Approach. Like I've said a million times, Approach is one of my favorite decks in the format to play. I just don't think it's well positioned. Approach is incredibly fun to play. It's just a little bit worse than this deck right now. If the metagame was to switch or like, you know, a card or two gets printed, maybe Blue White Approach will be better. But right now, I believe this deck is better than Blue White Approach. I played Blue White Approach yesterday anyway. You know me, I don't like playing the same deck day after day. We only played the teamer all that time because of specifically testing. 
Don't care about that. But uh, I played Blue White Approach yesterday. And we went 4-1 with it. Like, you can still win. She's not quite as good as it was. I'm going to hold up one counter rally wins from now on. Do I have hollowed ones? Are you asking about paper or moto? But yeah, this game was over once we resolved this versus that deck. But again, we fall into the same category. Like, Lost Legacy is incredibly hard for these decks to beat. And he's going to be a... Scarab deck? I have not read the new Black Dinosaur. I've not even saw it. Uh, so versus control, we typically bring in cards like this, cards like this. This card's actually probably pretty decent here. Uh, just noticing something. So we got here four seven. Typically take out cards like these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um these can actually win the game. Through a lost legacy versus this deck. Oh, no. Not 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 particularly. Um It's just like I said, it's just a it's just a blue white control deck. The only card that it plays that it doesn't really play a whole lot that blue white approach wouldn't play other than the little cycling package. We have to mulligan here. I have to mulligan here. I guess we'll keep it. It's not particularly good. Putting any card on the bottom that's not a land or a search for Ascanta. So check out the new black dino. Let's pull it across for other people. Six six. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's not new. That's been out a couple weeks. It's kind of cool. Sorry, I thought you meant something new new. I saw that card a week or two ago. I don't hate it. I mean, it's not playable and constructed, I don't think, but I don't hate it. I shouldn't say constructed. I guess EDH and stuff is constructed, and I obviously have no idea what's playable in those formats. Hey, opponent uses the correct art duress. I'll look at it again. Six mana for a six six. I'll reveal it from your hand. Put a prey counter on target creature. Only activate during your turn. It's kind of interesting. It says only activate disability during your turn when it used to say only as a sorcery, but I guess you can do it during your end step if you feel like it now. Kind of like the card. It actually might be playable. I read it a little bit better. It might be playable. Man, my channel has quite died. We have four folks watching tonight. So we'll start cycling this one. How's your uh, EDH been going? I mean, that seems awkward. Not sure why he would do that. Also, I'm not a millennial. I'm older than you. I turn much older next week, too. I think I'll actually keep that and try to draw two versus um, 
the blue black deck. I actually like bringing Torrential Gear Hulk in versus Scarab decks. Don't like people wasting counter spells on that card either. Glamour's arguable, but I really don't think you want to use it on Illumination. I almost want to cast that. I almost want to cast that. Baited. I'm just gonna slam Gear Hulk here. If he's got a counter spell, I don't really care. I'd rather use it now when he doesn't actually have anything good in his graveyard to get than wait until later. It seems like now it worked out perfect because Drakehaven resolves. And that's a game versus a blue-black deck. They can't beat this card. I mean, they can beat this card if they're ahead of it, but they can't beat this card from being behind on, or being even on board or behind. And next round. Easy breezy. Wow, that cue was instant. Who's our last round opponent? I'm curious if we got paired back to back versus the same guy. We did not. Whoops. Uh, this hands a keep. So we are one and one, and they're zero zero. This isn't a great match, but it's not. It's not stone horrible like the others. He has best the best card versus us. Is fun. This is the best card in their deck versus us. It's better than Hazard. It's better than Chandra. Hopefully he doesn't go one two three. If he goes one two three. We pretty much can't win. But what deck beats one two three from the uh, red decks? Even Teamer struggles in that regard. Oh, we had a shock too. Uh. Oh, what what fun it is! What a world we live in. Whatever. Go ahead and cycle so I can press F six. We're very desperately going to need to draw a land over our next two draw steps to even have a chance. If he's got a hazard, we have no chance, really. I want to basically screw the stone nuts. And it's one of the reasons this format's kind of bad. So, what do we want? We want our white cards. And we want to get rid of most of our blue spells that can't be cycled or that cost a large amount of mana. Whoops. You get your little butt over there too, friend. Wait, why are you not dragging over there? There you go. Um. 
I have a braid, so this card's not particularly good. I think I actually want this thing too. Which means I'm going to cut probably one of these. I'm going to cut this one. But it's a hard match. It's not it's not unwinnable, but it's hard. We'll play first and we drew our best card, but we don't have another land. I don't know if I'm willing to keep this on the draw. Or on the play. On the draw I would keep this. Alright, this hand's even worse. Alright, well, I guess we lose this round pretty easily. Maybe they'll have, like, some miserably slow draw, but... I'm close to keeping the first hand. Eh, doesn't look like a miserably slow draw so far. None of these blue-white decks are particularly good in this format, but this format is, in my opinion, the worst standard format I've ever played. Sell to Wreckage would be a good draw, especially if he's going to miss this land drop. That's a pretty good draw as well. So, if we take it all, if we take it all, we take one, two, three, six, eight, so we lose two total. If we play this and block this, we only lose three total. If we play this, so I guess we do that. Always yes, always yield. Always yield. Yes. Yeah, well, we have a chance this game, even with our horrendous draw. Certainly not favored, but we have a chance. Like a Chandra would be real bad for us. Every time I say a card would be real bad for us, it's immediately what they play, by the way. I don't know if anybody's ever noticed that. Because that's how we run in these hoods. He has something better to do than play that. That's scary. That is very scary. So cycle.
Um. This will double block. So we really need to pressure to Chandra. Or we really need to hit a cast out. One of the two. And the two cards in his hand. It's about worst case for me. Yeah. I'd like to hit a second cycler here pretty hard. Did not hit a second cycler here. So I don't think I can actually block. Pretty bad shape. Um, could try to get lucky, but I guess we're kind of dead on board. Just from this and double this. I guess we have to hit something to gain life or something. That's not it. So we just die. Oh, well, happens. We did mulligan twice. Had a pretty medium hand. They had a pretty good hand. But we are just dead on board. Kind of an interesting line. If I had renewed fate, that doesn't beat me or doesn't win either, so I don't know why you would do that, really. Yeah. Uh, any of our sideboard cards would have won that game pretty easily, but you don't always have to draw them. We, we brought eight in. We drew a, quite a few cards, but it's so whatever. Like I said, it's a hard match. He nut drew us game one and we mulligan twice game two, so not a not a lot you can really do in those spots. Uh, play first, and looks like we're mulliganing again. Kind of plagued with mulligans right now. All right, we'll keep this end. We have a scry, and then we have a cycle, and one draw step, and a search rascanta. So the odds of us playing search rascanta on turn two are pretty high. I feel like this deck wants another one of those. I like how we have like a four drop and a five drop, both of them being double white, and we don't have a white card in our hand though, so like, probably SOL. Huh? We did get to cast best card though. I feel like all of these blue white decks should have three of this card. I think they want closer, I think they sh should want 
closer to four of these cards than two of these cards. Putting anything in the graveyard at all, that's not exactly a land. Kind of odd. Wonder how many people in their life have said no to gaining the life off renewed fate. Uh, yep, we'll put it in our graveyard, especially when we have a sarcophagus to play. Just gonna play it too. I don't know what they could cast this turn that I care about counterspell wise, so just wanna go ahead and get that thing on play. It actually makes my search for Ascanta a little worse though, because anything we put in our graveyard of cycling now would be gone forever. Based from the search, I mean. Oh, well, never mind. I guess that kind of helps out. Let's start recycling this. Hmm. Not going to flip this this turn, since if we cycled this, we wouldn't get to use it anyway. If we, uh... Okay, we will flip it now, because now we have the opportunity to either use a counter spell or it. What I meant was I wasn't going to uh, cycle the guaranteed countervailing wins to guarantee it. But we didn't have to, so that worked out. I'm gonna have to read this one. I think it gives him a 1-1. One, one. So it gives him a couple 1-1s one, when he sacks it, but that's fine. Interesting they tap this land for it. Three lands on the bottom. So we have three Wrath of Gods and a hard counter spell in our hand. What a time to be alive. Yeah, don't care about that. Surprised to actually see that in his deck. Looks like he's casting Herald of Anguish. can pay for Metallic Rebuke, so. If he has a Counterspell or something, we can just untap and Fumigate. Down to 14. One card in opponent's hand. <sighs> I'm sleepy tonight. Take their abandoned sarcophagus. If this resolves, we can pretty much just say GG. Well, I mean, he could have another braid, but we could protect it at this point. It's like some kind of weird hair in my eye or something. Stop it, hi. Hi, 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 hi,
Another Herald of Anguish? I guess he has a counterspell this time. That's fine if he does. Just discard a card and then fumigate or something. Doesn't do a whole lot when we don't want any of the cards in our hand. If it's something miserably bad for us, we can use the one in our hand. If it's something not so bad for us, we can just let it resolve. This is a case of, I'm pretty sure we're just going to let it resolve. Yeah, we're just going to let it resolve. Not concerned about it. We have a cast out for it in our graveyard already. And then we have a counter spell for the next spell. Or if he'd hit something back breaking, we had a counter spell that turn. Eh. So I'd rather cycle this one. It's the one that I would rather use out of my graveyard. And this game's just over at this point. We have another hard counter spell in our graveyard, another cast out in our graveyard. It's just a matter of time before we hit a Drake Haven. I mean, maybe he could chain like spell after spell after spell, but he'd have to hit like six or seven runners in a row. And we'd have to be extremely code, which is beyond unlikely when we have a Ascanta already in play. I think we're just going to sideboard this game pretty much like we've been sideboarding versus a lot of these opponents. We'll pretty much bring in these. I don't think I'm going to bring in this. I think he has too many things for it. I think we're just going to cut some renewed fates. Nah, probably don't want to cut that many renewed fates. Let's cut one of each of these. Actually, keep the fumigating cut like that. Don't actually know what's in this deck, so do a little light sideboarding. Um, I will keep this on the draw. I basically value Search for Ascanta so highly that I'll keep very mediocre hands just to try to have it. We do have two draw steps at worst, though, to hit our next land, so we're already, you know, a favorite to really hit that land, and at worst case scenario, we can cycle something. Hey, welcome, Sean, welcome. Duress, no, don't take Bay. Don't take Bay. You leave my Search for Ascanta alone. That's why I kept this hand. You want a Hieroglyphic Illumination or a, a Countervailing Winds. No, no, no. That's not the droid you were looking for, opponent. How dare, opponent. How dare he. What are you into tonight? Are you working hard or hardly working? Going well, going well. And develop our lands, do a little dance, develop our lands, smile all the time. Develop our lands. Do 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 do. Kind of playing paint by numbers this match. I uh, don't really have a whole lot of commentary. 
We have been gotten that one point of damage will make you holla. Don't care about that. I'm going to reapply for direct, and I've never sold a card. Oh, hello, curator of mysteries. Welcome to the party. I hope you enjoy our graveyard. Is that where you going? That's, that's where you're going. He's getting close to the point where he's going to be able to play a fret and protect a fret. Definitely have to counterspell that. You could have a negate or something, that's fine. We So we got four two. Probably I'll probably cast settled records this turn. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. He's just attacking with two things. There's no way I'm casting Settle. I'm just going Torrential Gear Hulk. At the end of turn. Don't care if this gets counterspelled. Kind of want it to get counterspelled, to be honest. Because I'd like to play this Fumigate. If he's got double counter spell, I'm going to be a little sad. Mainly because it's not just double counter. Well, I'm not even going to play a counter spell now. We're just going to play this now. Just going to play this now. For those of you that are not keeping up, by the way, that's pretty darn good. Block a flyer. He's got one card in hand, so like even if he untaps and plays a herald or goes to his next step and plays a herald of anguish or something, we'd be uh, quite pleased. That's right. We're the aggressive deck, not him. Stop it, opponent. We are the aggressor, sir, not you. Yes. Yes. I think I'll uh, play around that last spell being relevant. All right, take it back. Don't care if it's relevant now. Opponent's probably pretty close to conceding. Hiya. And we have a lethal next turn. Don't care about that. It does nothing. There's the land we just saw. So he's got one card in hand. We'll just save our wins. So we know we have lethal now. He has no chance. And two and two. Getting ready to battle for a pity chest, friends. 
Man, we're under 10 people again tonight. I wonder what I've done to drive people away. The week of Teamer has damaged my stream beyond repair. Hope you get your TCG direct this time. And we will play first. What? This deck's very entertaining. This deck's a deck I actually have had a lot of requests for. It's probably my second most requested deck. My first most request is uh, blue white approach. So like, it's like just right up that alley of what people typically ask me to play for them. By the way, how are you doing tonight? I think your hand's pretty reasonable. Depends on how they play around threats and if we hit our lands and all that. I'd rather have cast out than, uh, oh. No. Oh. Drew Best Card. Hello, Best Card. How are you doing today, Best Card? Probably sideboarding out Best Card in this match, by the way. Uh, fumigate to my graveyard? I mean, I guess not. The odds of me needing another one of those are probably pretty high. I assume he's going to have like some bone pickers or something. Maybe keeping the second one's a little overkill, especially when we don't even have the fifth land yet. There's something in my eye. No, we'll keep that one at least once. I'll be right back, guys. I have to mute the mic for a moment. There's so Emmett, or as I'm going to refer to him, there's Emmett. What's up, Emmett? I'm probably willing to fumigate just to get that off the board. Especially if he plays a one drop to go with it. Did not play a one drop to go with it. Planes in the graveyard, sure. Renewed fate. Pretty nice here. Could have the Stanima card or whatever to bring this back. Which kind of sucks, but our life total is high enough that I still think it was worth risking that. Well, it sucks is if he has it again. A set on our graveyard? No, I guess we'll keep that one. Don't want to take the damage. And I don't care if he gets another land. Planes in the graveyard for sure. I 
We can use this to gain six life if we need to. But we get to flip the search for Ascanto no matter what next turn. And now we just start looking for a Drake Haven and go on about our day. Smitch is actually kind of hard for Blue White Approach, but he didn't draw any of the Scrap Heap Scroungers or any of the Wanderers or anything that like has resiliency of the graveyard. He actually had a very, 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 very remedial slow draw. Feels like he's considering conceding here, but I don't think he's solid enough to concede. He doesn't know whether we're Approach or Drakehaven yet. Like, some Approach decks even run a few of these. The, the Approach deck I was streaming yesterday that I 4 one with ran two of these, for example. Anyway, we stream... Uh, or we sideboard this deck a lot like we do Mono Red. We'll bring in the Authorities and the Regal Caracals. We'll get rid of most of our blue counter spells. Yeah, so he did decide to concede. Still think that was a little early. But it's whatever. So we're definitely going to want our eight white cards. Well, I didn't mean to put them over there, but whatever. Yeah, actually, whatever matters. I like pulling them to the sides so that people can see exactly what I'm doing. And I typically take out most of our blue expensive cards. Um, we have less to do on two mana with this deck than we do the other decks. So I think Search for Ascanta is reasonable still, even though I don't love it. I think these are reasonable, but I don't love them as well. Actually, probably kind of bad on the draw. I might bring them back in on the play. Kind of like looking at that. Hmm. Yeah, I think let's go with this. I may bring the Curators or the Gear Hooks or something in over to search for Ascantas on the play. But I'm not actually sure. Oh, we're definitely keeping this hand. Opponent Mulligan to six as well. And then they put on bottom. This will give us a nice, decent amount of life buffer. Oh wow, they don't have another land? Wow. They don't even get to play their threats, but we have three authorities if they ever do. Duress. So they'll probably take Settle here. Second Duress, and they'll take Fumigate. And then we'll have a problem, friends. It's kind of a tilt. I guess we'll let him take it. Cycle, cycle, but it's gonna take the cast out here. Just cycle the cast out, maybe, and looked for a sensor, but 
I chose to do it this way because if we draw another cast out, we get that cast out back. Or if we get to a point where we can fumigate or settle the wreckage, we get that cast out back. We don't have a lot of turns, though. Pretty happy with our decision now. Hopefully he doesn't have yet another discard spell. Okay, he doesn't. So that's good. Settled the wreckage is a great draw here. Turns on most of his hand, but turning on his hand's not that big of a deal. There's some chance he concedes. Generally, when you do this, people concede out of anger. All right, well, we acquired our pity chest back. Um, we didn't get paired versus any energy decks today. We dropped games to uh, Red Deck Wins, who nut drew us one game, and we mulliganed a 5-1 game. We lost both sideboarded games to... Uh, both sideboarded games to a tokens deck because they just resolved Lost Legacy when they were ahead both times. Happens... We beat uh, the Mono Black Aggro deck, which is a pretty good deck, but he had pretty mediocre draws. We beat a Blue Black deck, and then we beat... I don't even remember. The Blue Black deck's pretty easy to beat. Uh, then we beat, like, the uh, Grixis Improvise, which is it's an okay deck. It's like a nice little deck, but it's not great. But anyway, here we go. So this was the Curry Bo uh, Corey Burkhart list from the Channel Fireball article today. It's a pretty decent list. I like it. I don't play it particularly well. Um, it's one of my favorite decks in the format to play. If you're just looking for a fun deck, I highly suggest it. Um, Blue White Approach, also very similar in vain. They they play out a lot, a lot similar, and they're both pretty fun. So who are we going to stream today? I think we're going to host Sparrow's Rum. He's playing Standard, which is something we don't actually see a whole lot. Anyway, I appreciate you guys uh, watching, and make sure to follow. Check the links below the YouTube video for any relevant information you want. And the links below the stream as well if you're here. Take care, everybody, and I'll do my best to, as usual, be back tomorrow.